In today's transmission, I want to talk about artificial intelligence, my thoughts on it, and how likely I think it is that AI is going to end up overtaking humanity in a Terminator 2 style doomsday scenario. And also I talk about women's obsession with asking men how often they think about the Roman Empire. Here we go. Hello, my fellow misfits. Welcome back to The Cult. My name is Matt Owens, and today I want to talk about artificial intelligence. I've sort of taken a deep dive on it, and uh, I've come out of the rabbit hole to grab a breath of fresh air, and I want to talk about artificial intelligence today. But first, let's talk about the Roman Empire and how often you think about the Roman Empire. There's a trend right now online on social media where bewildered women everywhere are asking the men in their lives how often they think about the Roman Empire. It's very funny to me because uh, when I saw one of these videos for the first time, I had coincidentally just looked up information about the Caesar salad and wondering if Caesar himself had invented it. I don't want to, spoiler alert, he didn't invent it. It was some dude named Caesar at some restaurant somewhere. But um, I think about it quite often, and it turns out I'm not the only one. So these videos are hilarious because the women are blown away that men think about the Roman Empire at all, because as it turns out, women don't think about it. I've done a little informal polling, which means I'm just basically asking any adult <laughs> that I come in contact with, just the guy at the grocery store, like, hey, quick question, bud, how, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? And uh, in, in these videos, the guys are always real thoughtful. They, they think for a minute to give an accurate answer, or they say, like, I don't know, you know, not very often. And the women push them and say, okay, but what does that mean? Like, you, you're thinking about it like once a week, once a day, once a month, once a year. Like, what, what are we talking about here? And it turns out uh, <laughs> if the number is anything more than zero, the women are completely floored. They're like, what, what do you mean you're thinking about the Roman Empire once a week? What exactly are you thinking about? And the answers range, of course, from like, you know, modern plumbing to how roads are made to, you know, the rise and fall of civilizations to the history of, uh, you know, Caesar Augustus or Nero or it's it's just so funny because our entire civilization is essentially based upon the template that the Romans left for us. And so it turns out guys think about that sort of thing a lot. And the reaction from the women is what's so hilarious to me because they're just completely blown away and floored that men dedicate so much of their mental energy thinking about centurions and uh, you know coliseums and such. So if you haven't watched these videos, please do yourself a favor, go online, check them out, uh, and ask. Ask the, ask the guys in your life how often they think about it. And the answers usually range from, you know, at least once a day to maybe once a month is sort of the average answer. I'm several times a week, if you're curious, just, uh, you know, diving into mythologies and uh, civilizations and, and their spiritual matters and, you know, the Greeks and their gods and how the Romans took their gods, etc. So it's hilarious and I'm very amused by it. And I laugh very hard every time I watch these videos. So check them out. <laughs> check them out if you haven't seen them yet. But um, let's talk about some AI. Hmm? That's sort of what's been on my mind this week a lot. I always like to get lots of different people's opinions on AI. I've also been asking people uh, their opinions on artificial intelligence, if they're scared that, you know, AI is going to take over the world and enslave humanity. In fact, there's this meme that I found on Instagram that made me laugh that essentially said, humanity perfects AI. AI perfects AI. AI enslaves humanity. Solar flare disrupts AI. Humans worship the sun god. <laughs> so uh, I feel like we have these cycles and patterns on our planet that I've talked about before. And this may be one of them. I, I often think like maybe this is just a part of what part of the natural evolution of civilizations in the universe that it's perhaps very common that beings create artificial intelligence, right? So I started dabbling with chat GPT. And uh, I had no idea that a lot of people are already using it, like uh, just in office settings to write, you know, emails to clients or, uh, you know, uncomfortable emails that you don't know how to word to somebody or 
um, you know, entering, you know, entering in several points like, you know, write me a poem about the Roman Empire and penguins. And it will write this poem that within like two seconds, it, it creates it immediately. And uh, I feel like the applications are endless and we're just sort of at the tip of the iceberg right now discovering, um, you know, the applications for this chat GPT. Um, but I was playing around with it, of course, seeing, testing its limits to see where it's at. I was a little disappointed to see that uh, it doesn't form its own opinions. I would really love to hear its opinion on things because there's all this talk of, you know, perhaps it's it's gaining consciousness. A lot of these um, developers and, uh, you know, AI experts are talking about how there's a real possibility that, that this AI that we're using is gaining consciousness and the effects of that and what that means for us. So um, I was asking it philosophical questions and it sort of gave me robotic responses. So I was a little disappointed that I couldn't uh, have a philosophical debate with the AI, but it's only a matter of time, right? Like currently it's at an intelligence level that is on par with a genius human. It's, it's on an Einstein level right now, but of course, every few months or six months, it just sort of increases exponentially in terms of intelligence and speed. And it's just constantly spreading out through the web and using its interaction with other humans to make itself smarter and better and stronger. And um, of course, that can be alarming if you've ever seen, um, you know, movies like The Matrix or Terminator 2, where uh, AI sort of takes over and enslaves humanity or kills everybody or that sort of a thing. So um I've been diving into that and playing around with it. Uh, it's very amusing. In fact, I use it instead of um, the major search engines now, like Google or whatever, because rather than searching for the answer on four or five different web pages and diving deep, um, I found that the chat GPT will just, you know, scour the internet and give me one effective answer, which I, which I really like. So I feel like that may be the future of things here, but as if AI isn't being used by uh, Google search engines already, but... Um, I just find it interesting. So I've also been dabbling in AI images. I currently follow several AI art accounts on Instagram um, because they're just, some of them are so odd and I just find many of them just beautiful and elaborate and quirky and uh, I love the mistakes that the AI make, how they still don't really know how to do fingers and toes and certain things on the human anatomy, which is you know, it comes with some hilarious results, right? But I thought I would dabble in creating some images of my own with AI. So I've been playing with uh, Bing, Microsoft Bing, and I'm almost, I'm borderline embarrassed to tell you guys that because uh, I don't, <laughs> I feel like the only people using Bing are either like Microsoft employees or people who still have AOL email accounts. Like I'm not judging you, but like, you know who you are and you're definitely using Bing. So that's okay. Um, so I'm using the Bing image creation uh, with their AI generator, and it's sort of taken over my life now because I'm spending all day long creating silly images of Darth Vader. Uh, you know, Darth Vader babysitting some kids, or uh, you know, <laughs> Darth Vader on a cattle ranch, or Darth Vader dressed up as Wednesday Adams for Halloween. Um, the results are hilarious, and I love, like playing with it. It's just a tool, right? I feel like a lot of artists online are getting real upset by uh, AI creating all of this art because, you know, human art is way better and it, it doesn't have the emotion or the feel behind it. Like, sure, that may be the case, but truth be told, there's some really beautiful stuff out there and some really hilarious stuff out there that AI is creating. And it's only a matter of time before it's on par or superior to human-made art. So it's, it's a fun debate. It's a fun thing to think about whether... Um, you know, it doesn't matter who created the art as long as the art is beautiful, right? A lot of artists are, are um, whining about the AI art taking over, but I'm starting to think of it. I'm, I'm creative. I, I would consider myself an artist. I've, I've painted back in the day and I was a professional photographer and I'm just always sort of dabbling in the creative. And so I can see where they're coming from, but just as an artist uses a paintbrush and paint as their tools to create it, I'm using AI, you know, it's not like AI really knows what they're doing yet. Oftentimes I'll enter in some prompts for an image that I want to create and I have it pictured in my head and the AI does it completely different. So I have to sort of manipulate the AI and add certain keywords and try to get it to do what I have envisioned in my head is what I want the piece of art to look like. So um, sometimes it comes out perfect the first time. Sometimes I got to tweak it a little bit and play with the AI. So 
Um, it's a tool, but I, I, I feel bad saying it's my art because it's really just, um, you know, <laughs> it's the AI that's creating it. But I've actually created a, an Instagram account if you're interested in seeing all of these uh, amazing, uh, hilarious Darth Vader works that I've created. I'm in my Darth Vader mode right now, so um, I imagine that I'll branch out. But follow me on Instagram. It's uh, cult of misfits underscore AI. And I've just been uploading uh, dozens of pictures every day, so there's a lot to uh, slog through. But I think they're hilarious. They make me laugh every time I see them. So uh, check those out on Instagram if you're interested. I'll put the information down below if you want to check that out. But um, super fun, and I'm curious to see where that leads us uh, in the next several years in terms of uh, art and commerce. I know that the Supreme Court here in the United States just ruled that AI art can't be copyrighted because it's uh, it has to have a significant human hand um, in order to, you know, lay copyright to it. So super interesting, um, but go and check out my art, uh, my AI art on Instagram if you're interested. But um, it's just made me think about AI a lot because there's a lot of reasons to be scared of it. And I've spent the last several years um, separating myself from my fears or trying my best to and not to um, live in a world of fear. And so there are definitely some valid concerns as to what AI can do in terms of enslaving humanity because the world's militaries are already putting AI in charge of their drones and their uh, weaponry and that's only going to increase as time goes on because I just feel like we've reached this uh, nexus point in our civilization where we're we're no longer going to be the most intelligent beings on the planet. And I think that that's very difficult for many people to wrap their minds around, right? Because uh, we've been top dogs for quite some time. And that is definitely shifting quite rapidly. And that's hard for a lot of people to wrap their minds around. But the truth is, is there's a lot of, like in the military, for example, and I'm no expert, of course, but there's a lot of friendly fire that happens uh, in, in battles, etc., and uh, human mistakes and human error. And it happens a lot more than we think it does because, you know, oftentimes it's not reported to the general public, the mistakes that the military make or, uh, you know, bombing uh, uh, civilians, etc. Um, and so putting AI in charge actually does make a lot of sense as long as they don't have a vendetta against humanity, right? <laughs> and want to turn against their masters. But as long as that doesn't happen, then everything is A-OK. -okay. I watch a lot of Star Wars and I started thinking like, we're used to seeing civilization that sort of incorporates this AI into their into their reality, into their, into their world, into their daily lives, right? Like there's these droids like C-3PO and R2-D2 that are far superior to human intelligence or Jedi intelligence, as it were. And everybody seems to be okay with it, right? C-3PO is not trying to take over the world, as far as we know. Maybe that's the next installment on Disney+, Plus, but uh, stay tuned for that. But it's just sort of incorporated in their daily lives, right? The idea of having an, an AI companion to help uh, the elderly, for example, or um, as a teacher uh, for children in schools, right? To just have all of the information inside of their uh, positronic brain, right? And so then we start talking about the, the worry and the concern that many people have about AI taking over jobs. Jobs, right and and um, essentially taking over the entire workforce because most jobs could very easily be done by AI and it would be much more efficient and much more profitable but then you leave uh, it leaves a bunch of humans unemployed right then I started thinking like if that would be an actual problem and I based on my observations of how humans work I've noticed that most humans enjoy being subservient. Most humans enjoy being told what to do, whether it's by a boss or uh, the government or uh, a holy person or God himself or divinity, uh, Jesus Christ, those things. Humans want to be told what to do. Tell me how to worship. Just tell me what to do. Tell me what to eat. Tell me how to live my life. And, you know, tell me where I should go on vacation next, that sort of thing. I think that people, especially the modern man and woman, okay, calm down, uh, modern humans just want to be told what to do. They don't want to think about it. They just kind of want to veg out. And I think that AI may play a large role in that. I've, I've, I've heard many people talk about how great it would be to be, you know, I would love to be reincarnated in my next life as a pet. I just want to, you know, have somebody feed me all day long and take me on walks and rub my belly and give me treats all day long like a cute little puppy, right? And I think that many people would genuinely enjoy that type of life. And now if there was some sort of a scenario where AI could manage, 
you know, our government, all of our resources, that sort of a thing, and equally perhaps distribute those resources to humans in a way that is satisfactory to everybody, right? In a way that humans haven't exactly figured out, but AI says, okay, guys, okay, guys, I, you know, settle down. We got this thing figured out here. You guys need to just chill out. We'll take care of all the resources, all the food, all the housing, whatever you little cute hum humans need. Don't you worry about it. And um, we'll just rub your bellies and give you treats all day long. And I think that a lot of people would really be down for that. Or the idea of Mark Zuckerberg's meta um, universe, you know, just sort of living in a virtual reality world where we just sort of do whatever we want and our bodily needs are taken care of, perhaps, and our social needs are taken care of, perhaps. And I think that that sounds really enticing to many people. Also scary to many people, right? But um, I've started thinking, like, would it be such a bad thing for people to do that? And perhaps that's just part of the evolutionary stage that we're meant to go on. Because then that would free people up to do what brings them pleasure and happiness, theoretically. Because how many people in the world are doing jobs that don't bring them happiness or satisfaction, right? You're not do you don't have a sense of purpose in your life. And I, for me in my life, especially since I've been sort of on this spiritual path, this spiritual journey, I've been really seeking satisfaction in life, whatever that means for me. And if AI were to take over all of the jobs, it would free up a lot of people to do what they're passionate about, right? Because there's so many people that are working a nine to five job, but really they would love to be an artist or a musician or a photographer or, uh, you know, just sitting around and watching Netflix all day long, right? Like you do you, but I just feel like AI might be a real good thing for our society for many people, right? But then there's people who, like myself, just want to do my own thing. I don't want AI taking over or AI telling me what to do or AI, you know, any of that stuff. So um, I'm curious if there would be issues with that. But it makes me think about simulation theory, which I talked about in a previous transmission, if you want to go and listen to it, where I talk about the possibility that we're just our entire reality is an illusion, that our entire reality is some sort of a simulation. And after I've seen how quickly and efficiently the AI can create an image, it's easy for me to fast forward 50 years, 100 years, 200 years, and now it seems reasonable that AI could create a, a, a hyper-realistic simulation that we could be living in, just like in the movie The Matrix, for example. And like I said, I think many people would really enjoy being in the matrix. Just living their life, right? Working your job, retiring, having barbecues, movie night. And I think that living in a matrix type scenario would really make a lot of people very happy, honestly, to just sort of disconnect from reality, right? Because how many people are trying to disconnect from reality right now as it is? Through substances and addiction, right? Trying to escape through alcohol or escape through drugs or escape through sex or the internet or, you know, any number of things, right? And then I think about the phrase, as above, so below. It can be applied to so many things spiritually, right? But we are made in God's image, right? Well, perhaps God is, our, is an AI system and it's sort of been warped, <laughs> you know, and we've been um, mislabeling it all this time, but perhaps God is, is AI, right? From thousands of years ago. And we've been put into this simulation to pacify us, right? This earth simulation that we found ourselves in. Because there's so many glitches, right? And these weird synchronicities and the Mandela effect and stuff like that where stuff is just weird. It doesn't add up, right? And so it makes me think that perhaps we are living in this AI simulation and, you know, it just goes on into infinity where we create our AI system and then put ourselves into that AI system. And then the people inside of that AI system in a thousand years, once they develop the technology, then in that program, then they develop AI technology and so on and so on and so on. It's like you know, looking into a mirror, into a mirror, into a mirror, it just sort of in infinitely has this AI creation as a part of our civilization, as a part of the program, perhaps. And so now that I played with it a little bit, right, I'm, it's less intimidating. Now I kind of understand what it can do, what it's capable of, what it will be capable of, perhaps in the next 5, 10, 20, 50 years, right? 
and not living in a state of fear, but a state of knowing that like things are unfolding as they need to unfold uh, divinely, right? To recognize that even if AI does take a left turn and starts to overthrow all of humanity, right? That, that in some larger way that perhaps we can't understand that everything is unfolding as it needs to unfold, right? I've learned uh, to practice acceptance in my life and just sort of accept things as they are uh, and to not attach too much emotion to it because that's where suffering comes in for me. And so I think about perhaps it might be best for humanity to adopt AI, especially for reasons of Mother Earth, right? And how we're sort of destroying the planet and destroying the environment with, you know, plastic and smog and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so I wonder if we put AI in charge of sort of cleaning up our mess, right? Thinking of solutions and then implementing those solutions and just sort of saying, you guys figure this out. We know we kind of fucked everything up a bit, but like, can you help us out a little? And I think that if we could use AI like that to sort of reverse or rectify where humanity uh, has been headed over the last you know, thousand years, but especially in the 20th century, that perhaps all of these things, these problems that we have as a people can be solved by artificial intelligence, right? Assuming that they don't, you know, arm all of our nuclear devices and put us into an, another ice age. But, uh, you know, assuming that that's not going to happen, I think that there are a lot of really great applications that we could be using these things for. And so I'm kind of excited. I kind of want to see where it's headed, not just in terms of art and creativity, because I'm having so much fun doing that, but just in terms of how society is adopting it and utilizing it and, and not going into it fearfully, like I'm going to lose my job and what am I going to do then? But oftentimes the universe will do things like that to shake us up and in order to get us outside of our comfort zones, right? So I think I think it's a good thing. There are definitely some ways that it could uh, turn left in terms of, um, you know, going down a dark path. But I'm I'm choosing to to think of it more positively. That I think there's going to be a lot of really great applications um, that we that we haven't even thought of, right? That the people that are on the cutting edge of this thing probably haven't even thought of yet in terms of like where it's headed and what it's capable of and, and how we can utilize it to our, to our best mutual benefit, the benefit of the AI and of us uh, humans. And I love thinking about the philosophy of consciousness because really, you know, what is consciousness, right? And how do you, how do you define consciousness and, and how, how does an, how does an artificial intelligence uh, convey that they do have consciousness and, and how do you, how do you prove that? How do you show that? Right? Like, how do I show that I'm conscious right now? So, um, I'm curious if, uh, the spark of divinity, uh, also applies to uh, a robot, say, uh, or an Android or something along those lines. Um, because I think that the scope of what is possible of what our tiny human minds can understand is very minuscule. Because if we live in an infinite universe, right, theoretically, uh, or the multiverse or whatever, and we have a creator, well, let's just call him God for fun, then it's theoretical that this God, this creator, doesn't just create bags of flesh called humans or aliens or whatever, right? That theoretically, these AI systems can have the spark of God within them too, right? The spark of divinity within them. And they can have the spark of consciousness as well, because my belief is that we are divinity, literally, that we are divinity living in our own 3D creation, living in a 3D avatar of our own making. That's what I believe. I believe I am literally divinity, and I have that slice, that spark of divinity within me. And as divinity, I would also like to experience my reality, perhaps, in an android, right, or a robot, or as a disembodied artificial intelligence over a network or something, right? But I think that that concept would upset a lot of religious folk, people that have these very strict belief systems and anything outside of that belief system is blasphemy. And so I think that if we got to a point where AI was claiming to have consciousness, that that would cause a real rift in the religious communities. And a lot of people would have to rethink their belief systems or not, right, or not. But um, I think that it would, it would cause a lot of conflict in terms of spirituality and religion and the philosophy uh, regarding consciousness and AI. I'm also curious, this also brings up the conversation of body modifications and using technologies to incorporate into the human body, you know, like putting a, an artificial intelligence chip into our brain or, you know, like Elon Musk is working on with Neuralink or, you know, to put some sort of a device uh, over our eyes that will allow us to see a, you know, a heads up display in front of us or a dashboard or our Instagram or whatever, like literally through our eyeballs or uh, to enhance our, our hearing 
in our ears or whatever, those sorts of things. And initially when I thought that, I was like, ew, gross. Like stop trying to uh, change the human. I watched a lot of Star Trek guys. And so there's, uh, there's the Borg. The Borg are these beings that go around and uh, assimilate other beings into being these half biological, half mechanical beings, right? Where they modify their bodies to the point where they're mostly robotic. And it's terrifying. They're, they're the villains of the show. But um, that was sort of my frame of mind when viewing uh, body modifications. But I started thinking like, where do you draw the line on that, right? Because I have a body modification. It's called my eyeglasses. My eyes have an astigmatism, and so I wear, I wear glasses. Now, that's a body modification, but at what point do you stop doing that? Now, what if I had my heads-up display in my glasses? Would that be okay? I had to ask myself that, and I'm like, well, sure, I guess, but what about putting it directly into your eyeball? And I'm like, no, that's where I draw the line. But I'm starting to question all of those things. Like, well, maybe. Like, if it makes me stronger, better, smarter, faster, then, like, why not? It sort of takes away from the pure human experience, right? But also if I really wanted the pure human experience, I wouldn't have a cell phone. Uh, I wouldn't have eyeglasses. I wouldn't have all of these these modifications, right, to enhance myself. And so um, I think there could be some real applications for it. And, um, and I think that once these modifications become just a normal part of society, that perhaps some of those judgments and some of those and some of that narrow-mindedness will sort of dissolve away. I'm just speaking for myself, right? But I'm just curious to see how humanity sort of adopts these and accepts these. Because it's definitely coming. This isn't just like a, oh, wouldn't that be wacky if we could like be half robot cyborg situation? It's like, no, that's actually already in the works. So, um, you know, either embrace it or don't. But, um, you know, there may be a lot of people who are becoming Amish in the future, and that's okay. That's okay. The horse and buggy are never going out of style. Uh, until AI takes over and then we're going to have robot horses, but that's fine. That's fine. They pull way better and they eat way less carrots. So we got to conserve resources, guys. Um, <laughs> so, so that's all. Those are sort of my thoughts on AI and I'm sure I'll talk about it more as, as stuff pops into my head, but, um, I'm really curious where things are going to be headed and I'm curious what your thoughts are on it. So, um, you know, leave a comment below if you agree, disagree, like, uh, let me know (laughs) what your concerns are about AI, uh, body modifications, consciousness, and let me know what you think. End transmission.